grade 6 math, number 9.7, multiplying integers. Okay, we have like signs. When we multiply a positive number with a positive number, we're going to get a positive answer. When we multiply a negative sign with a negative sign, those are like signs, so our answer is still going to be positive. When we multiply a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive like here, these are unlike signs. These signs are not the same as each other. See, like these are alike to each other. These are different. So these are unlike signs. Our answer is always going to be negative. There's a thing called the zero property rule. Anytime we multiply a zero with a positive number or a negative number, it's just going to be a zero. We don't have to worry about the sign, okay? And no matter what we multiply by a zero, the answer is going to be zero, all right? We can use patterns to help us multiply integers. If we have 5 times negative 2, we can start with a 5 times 2 and slowly work our way down the number line to 5 times 1, 5 times 0, to 5 times negative 1, to 5 times negative 2. And that can help us see how the product is going to change to a negative number. See? We have 5 negative 2's. So we've got 10 negative. See? If we have a negative times a negative, we can still start with a pattern to help us figure out the answer. A negative 5 times 1 is a negative 5. Negative 5 times 0 is 0. Negative 5 times negative 1 is going to be a positive 5 because it's on the opposite side of the 0 like the number line, remember? So a positive 5 times a negative 2 is going to be a positive 10. But remember, they have like signs, the negative 5 and the negative 2 and the negative 5 and the negative 1, so the answer is going to be positive, okay? When we multiply, the equations can be written with an x to mean multiply. So a 3 and then an x and then a 2, we know that means 3 times 2. The equation can also be written with a dot to mean multiply. So if you see 3 with a dot and then a 2, that still means 3 times 2. The numbers can be written right next to a variable. You know, a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown number. So if we've got 3y, that means 3 times y. And y is taking the place of the number that we don't know what it is, okay? If it says 2x, we don't want to use this to mean multiply anymore because x could be a variable. And in algebra, it's a variable majority of the time. That and a and b, x, y, and a and b are huge as variables in algebra. So you need to start getting into the habit of writing something else than an x for multiplying, okay? This is grown-up math. The x is going to go away as multiplication. We're going to start using dots or just putting the numbers next to each other, okay? The numbers can also be written up next to the side of a parenthesis like this. This means 3 times 2, okay? Used very widely in algebra, putting a number right next to a parenthesis like that. Also, when you have two parentheses next to each other, that means 3 times 2, okay? So, the whole point of the variable, that alphabet that takes the place of an unknown number, that's why we can't use an x anymore, okay? All right. When we see a, an equation like this, it says 3y for y equals negative 5, we just rewrite it, and we put the negative 5 in place of the y. The y is the variable. So now we've got 3 multiplied to negative 5. They have unlike signs. This is a positive 3. That's a negative 5. So our answer is going to be negative, negative 15. Here's another one. We've got a negative 4x when x is negative 6. We rewrite it with the negative 6 for the x, negative 4 times negative 6. They have like signs, so the answer is positive. Okay? So remember, unlike signs is a negative product, and like signs is a positive product. Okay? So let's try doing these. We've got negative 7y equals 35. So what can y equal? What times negative 7 would be a positive 35? Do you remember the like and unlike signs? What can make a positive answer? Well, we know 7 times 5 is 35, but is it going to be a positive or a negative one? We need a positive answer. So we need like signs. That means it's going to have to be a negative 5. See? Because then the negative 7 and the negative 5 have the same sign. That'll make a positive 35, okay? 
negative 9x equals negative 36. Okay, now we've got a negative times something. We have to figure out what x stands for, but the answer is negative. So we're multiplying a negative, but the answer is negative. So guess what? This x is going to have to be a positive answer, isn't it? So we know the answer is positive, but 9 times what is 36? 9 times 4. So we know the answer is a 4. And we don't really need to write the positive sign, do we? Because we just know that it's there when we write a 4. Okay, 5a equals negative 30. So a equals what? 5 times what equals 30? Well, 5 times 6. But this is a positive 5, and we have a negative answer. So you know what? We can't have a positive 6, because that would be a positive 30. See, a positive and a positive. So we need to have a negative 6 to make that a negative 30, to have a negative answer. We need unlike signs, okay? Now we've got negative 11p equals 33. So what does p equal? So 11 times what is 33? Well, 11 times 3. But we've got a positive answer. So what is p going to be to make this a positive answer? It needs a like sign with the 11. And the 11 is negative, so the 3's got to be negative to make a positive answer. See that? All right, now we've got 6m equals negative 42. A positive 6 times something is equal to 42. 6 times what is 42? 6 times 7 is 42. But is it going to be positive or negative? Well, we have a negative answer, and 6 is positive. So if the answer is negative, we need unlike signs. So if this is a positive, m has to be negative. See? All right. I hope that helped. So I want you to remember, the absolute value of a number is how far away it is from 0. So the absolute value of 3 is 3, and the absolute value of 26 is just a 26. It's that many spaces from 0. And these lines mean absolute value. When you see this, you know they want you to just take away the sign, okay, and write it how many spaces it is from 0. And I want you to remember that the additive inverse of a number means it's opposite, you know, across from the 0. So the additive inverse for 2 is negative 2. The additive inverse for negative 4 is 4, because across the 0, that's its opposite, okay? Additive inverse. All right, so I hope that helped you with the multiplying integers, because we're moving forward. We're going to start talking about dividing them next, okay? I hope this was helpful. I hope you've been able to follow along. I really believe you can do this. It's not as hard as you think it is. If you just keep trying, you'll be fine, okay? See you next video. Bye.